Hey guys, it's Shadow the Rat, and uh, unfortunately today's video is a little bit difficult um, because I wanted to show you uh, the difference between two of my rats with pituitary gland tumors. One of the unfortunate things with pituitary gland tumors in rats is that they are not all treatable. So right here you can see two of my rats. This is Donut. She's nearly two and a half years old. She's been treated for a pituitary gland tumor for six and a half months. And as you can see, she's doing fantastic. She has absolutely no problems, takes her meds no problems, and she is just having a complete blast with her life. She has a great quality of life. She's really not showing any signs of the tumor at all, even though it's still there, of course. It's just that it's being managed with meds. Now, Banana, on the other hand, is unfortunately a lot younger. She's only a little over a year and a half, and she started to develop her pituitary gland tumor about a week and a half ago, and she has not responded to meds. So this is a very clear difference that you can see here. You can see how out of it Banana is compared to Donut. She's just so much more confused, so much duller, just really not aware, so to speak, uh, and it's just a really sucky thing to see. And this is unfortunately the biggest problem with pituitary gland tumors in rats because most of them can't be treated very well. And most rats with them end up like banana, even if you get them on treatment immediately, which I did. Even if you do steroids and a prolactin antagonist like cabergoline and bananas even on gabapentin, which is a pain medication. Even with all of that, she's not doing well. And donut on the other hand, she's gotten nearly seven months. It's just, you know, it just depends what type of pituitary gland tumor they have. Banana has one that is apparently not hormonal based because hormonal based ones, which are called prolactinomas, they will respond to prolactin antagonists like capergoline or bromocryptin. But unfortunately, not all pituitary gland tumors in rats are prolactinomas. And if they aren't, they won't respond to capergoline or bromo because they're just not those types of tumors. And for those, all you can do is treat with steroids for as long as possible at the highest dose possible. You just want to reduce inflammation as much as possible around the tumor uh, because basically pituitary gland tumors themselves are benign, but as they grow, they kind of raise the pressure in the skull, which in turn, unfortunately, starts to crush the rest of the brain, which is where all these symptoms that you associate with pituitary gland tumors come in. Uh, and so if you can reduce inflammation, that helps to reduce the pressure some because the inflammation also drives up the pressure. But unfortunately, while inflammation will respond to steroids, you don't always have a tumor that responds to medication. And if the tumor isn't responsive to medication, then it will continue to grow. And eventually it will be exerting just as much pressure as it did with the inflammation, even if all the inflammation is reduced with steroids. And if you can't treat the tumor at that point, and the rat's quality of life is tanking like bananas is, at that point, it's best to consider euthanizing. And I will be euthanizing banana in a few days. Unfortunately, just one of those things that you see with pituitary gland tumors, they often aren't very responsive to medications. And at most, you'll usually get a few days to a few weeks back. And it's only really lucky cases like donuts that get a few months back. And I've seen a lot of people mentioning Donut and her success with treatment to people with pituitary gland tumor rats on like the rat forum pages, um, the rat Reddit page, uh, the rat Facebook pages I'm part of. And I think that's really great because I do want people to know about these treatment options. And I think it's worth treating rats, even if you don't know if they're going to respond or not, because you might have a rat like Donut that responds super well. But at the same time, you do have to also keep in mind that not all rats will be responsive. And if they don't show a response in the first two weeks, a positive response that is, then unfortunately they aren't going to show a response and the best thing to do is to euthanize them. And, you know, it's easy to look at a case like Donuts and say, well, you know, maybe I should keep trying. But the thing with Donut is she responded immediately and that's just kind of where she lucked out because even though she's unlucky enough to have a pituitary gland tumor, she's lucky enough to have one that's responsive to medications. So she gets this quality life where, you know, banana is not as fortunate. And unfortunately, you can't remove pituitary gland tumors in rats because of their size. And that's usually what you would do with humans if they didn't respond to calvergoline. So it's just, you know, a very difficult situation. And, you know, the best thing to do for rats, if their tumor is not responsive, is to get them euthanized before they decline too much. The whole point of this video is just to show you the difference between kind of a rat that's responding to medications for a pituitary gland tumor 
and then a rat that isn't responding to medications like banana. And banana has kind of run off, um, but you know, you can see at the beginning that she really isn't aware as she used to be. And she's definitely out of it and she's just getting worse. So like I mentioned, I will be having her euthanized very soon. And I'm not trying to discourage anyone from treating because again, I think it's very much worth a shot. Um, but I am trying to say that, you know, if you don't see a response to treatment, then unfortunately the best thing often is to euthanize. And like I mentioned, that's what I will be doing with banana.